Hello, me again. That was a very sudden ending. Sorry about that. Um, this is step three or four, maybe, um, of the fox gloves. I'm still working with um, the acrylic and making moves that are quite bright now, capturing the sun falling on the stems of the fox gloves. And I thought I might use oil paint after this when it's when the acrylic is dried. I had the idea that I might use some oil paint in order to capture. Um, the dark background, the piano behind these lovely bright um, foxglove stems and flowers and they're completely bathed in, in afternoon sunlight here. So there's this lovely quality of um, light falling on the trumpets and on, and then of course there's dark as well. It's only in the, in the contrast, like Matt Haig says, the dark accentuates the light. Um, he's talking about a river and he's also talking about his own experience of depression. <laughs> Sorry, here we go again. But you know the dark experiencing, uh, the dark accentuating the light that even if it feels in the midst of it that there's no purpose afterwards, you can stand back and look. You could sit on the bank of the river and notice how the dark ripples really let the brightness of the, sp the sprinkles of sunlight shine out. And I had that experience the other day. Gosh, I must do the newsletter. I keep um Anyway, I had the experience the other day when I was at Flotterston at the reservoir there. Just such glorious sunshine spattering all over the water. It was a bit windy, you see, so there was a kind of a, you know, ripply, tumultuous thing going on. Warm, though. Like, the water itself was lovely and warm cycle over and by the time I get there I'm desperate to dive in because it's an uphill cycle over usually against the wind and then there's nothing better than cycling back my wet you know my wet hair and the feeling of the lake water still glistening on my body you know I can feel it tingling my skin still and on the bike I chuck my swimsuit in the basket and the towel on my head and cycle downhill with the wind at my back and that's a very different experience from the cycle over but it's, it's the memory of that happening that makes me cycle over in the first place. You know, the memory of the after, um, the evidence of the aftermath. And on the way over too, it's it's kind of good to, it's a bit like the dark accentuating the light again, isn't it? Good to have to kind of pound the pedals a bit. And maybe it makes it all the more pleasant when I do get in the water then. But I think it definitely does because I need to cool down like there's a crowd swimming there yesterday and they've um, invited me along. I've got a Facebook group, but they were going way down East Lothian today. I nearly went, it was half 10, I was supposed to be there though, and I would have been a lot later. And I still quite like the whole ritual of going off on my own for a swim. And I don't go out of my depth or anything like that, but there's something really nice to feel like it's my time to shed it all, <laughs> do you know? Not not like I want to shed everything, but you know, my time to shed the stuff I want to shed. <laughs> now that's actually, see I've moved, I think that leaf should be up there. I don't like the way the two of them are so close together down at the bottom there. Those two, they replicate each, other's, each other too much. So I'm going to just wash away the more recent one, which I think is the one that's less accurate as well. And just wipe that off. I've got rags and tea towels and things to wipe away. Yeah, it's good to stand back as well because you never know what you're doing that might be unnecessary. Okay, and when I stood back there, I thought it would be helpful to use a stencil for the leaves, some, for some leaves. I think anything that gives a different mark adds to the, adds to the thing. You know, a, variety, a bit of variety in the surface and also it's kind of helpful when you don't really know how a mark was made. And I think the stencil sometimes has that effect of, of creating a very different quality of, of mark that leaves you wondering how was that put on 
And that's good, I think. Right, there are some bits and pieces here now that I want to stencil on as well. I think the thing with stenciling too is that it stops me becoming too careful and pernickety about things because I don't really know what I'm stenciling. You know, I try and find a shape that looks a bit like the foxglove, but it's not a precise art at all. Like, so, and that's good. That's good actually, because precision isn't really, you know, that that way that we can be very pernickety about getting an exact replica of what we're seeing, especially botanically. There is a tradition, isn't there, which is a beautiful tradition of um, painting things in a very precise way, you know, which is a lovely thing. Um, but it's not this, you know, this this to me is um, a different thing from that. Um, I'm keen to explain, um, so you can maybe use that over the dry acrylic and paint the dark oil paint through that. Uh -huh. What was I going to say to you there now? Yeah, to me it's more capturing something of the um, feeling of the vigour and the liveness of the plant and the feeling of it more so than the um, the um, biology of it I suppose, you know, the, the figure, the yeah, the biology, that's what I meant, I think. <coughs> Just wanting, with my eyes half closed, to make a bit of sense of what's going on down here, you know. There are things that I'm maybe missing. Just really dark blue, I think, is a good injection. Here and there. And there's already a bit of blue underneath that I'm quite happy with. So I'm going to continue letting the blue flash through here and there. As a very dark um, accent. It could be the underside of some leaves as well maybe. And it's the Prussian blue hue is what I'm using. Every time I say hue I think of my friend Evelyn who had a friend called Hugh and she was very, <laughs> she, she was trying to explain to her other friend all about how Hugh lived next door. And she said, Hugh said he lives next door to you. <laughs> And my friend was saying, no, I didn't. I didn't say he lived next door. It took a long time before they figured out why they were getting so confused. Anyway. So it's a Prussian blue hue, this colour. And it's a nice, satisfying dark blue. At least as far as I can see, every time I stand back, the light from behind the window is causing me to question my tones because... It's so very bright back there and I'm still resisting putting the piano colour on with um, the acrylic. Yeah, I think I'm going to, there'll be places down here where the piano colour is as light as that and the leaves will be darker. And then there's other places where the piano is really quite dark and the leaves will be lighter. So I love that. It's a nice thing to have that kind of juxtaposing of light and dark in the background and needing to, to figure it all out as you go. Which edge needs to be the darker one? And so um, it's a nice dance that's created that way, you know. Something fascinating happens and satisfying. I think there's this, this satisfaction. I think maybe we as human beings too respond well to variety and surprise you know, to be surprised by the darks and lights and the dance of them. Now, as I talk about darks and lights, I notice there's quite a lot of light there that I haven't found yet on that beautiful. So it's, this is the, the mostly yellow sap green and white is what I'm using here for this really bright um, flowery edge on the right hand side there. I'm glad that Lily didn't come back. We were trying to get her I thought, will I get her to come back from school so she can be here for the phone call from the doctor? But then she just told me all about her hand, her finger on the phone because she wants to go to the rehearsals for the concert which are on this afternoon. But wasn't it lucky that I didn't get her to come home because look, we haven't had the phone call yet from the doctor and she, she would have been just sitting there on her phone or something. 
Um, she's a lot, a lot better off in school. And I'll just, um, when the doctor does phone, I can tell her the particulars and I suspect they'll send her for an x-ray. I hope that it doesn't need to get set again or some awful thing like that. Poor child. We'll see. I'm not going I'm actually, as my old business coach used to say, don't energise that thought. <laughs> so that's consider it not energised or de-energised. She's a really healthy, um, strong individual as Lily. So I have trust, trust that it'll work out fine, whatever it is needs to happen for her. Now up there, there's more of this grey, where is it, that colour. This is a lovely soft Payne's grey colour for the background. And I think I will put it, because all of this reads now is the same to me, but don't worry, it won't stay that way, because in between this, the leaves here, is a lighter grey colour. And in between the leaves over here is this dark mahogany. So that's going to cause um, a difference of, uh, you know, variety again, as I say. And I think I'd, I'm happy to use the acrylic for now still. There's a bit of a transition when I'd move on to oil because that means that there's no going back to the acrylic. So I am kind of finding places where I definitely want to use acrylic. And the, the bonus for this is that this painting is coming with us to Ireland on Saturday. And the bonus of using acrylic too in the thicker areas is that paint dries faster. Now, I'm kind of trying to find the shape of the spaces between. I don't know if I've got a good colour. It's dark underneath that leaf there. not an awful lot of places where the grey is lighter really so I think it is lighter on the other side of that box love at the top see this is one of the things I was talking about now do you see how the grey background is lighter than this side of the fox love but the fox love on this side is brighter than the grey background and it creates that feeling of of form and depth I think when that's observed with uh, care might do some over there too. It's more got more white in it. The background over here is really white. In between these um, fox love shapes, you know, the little buds at the top. It's quite a lot of brightness to the left of them, which is really the window frame, and it outlines too the shape of the fox love flowers which towards the window are darker. You'd imagine they'd be lighter, but they're because of the brightness behind their reading is darker, these flowers, than some of the ones in the middle of the painting. Especially the left side. So I'm kind of happy enough that I've got a light color that, that will read as significantly brighter than the stem on the left side there. And even, even here too, behind the leaves, it's creating contrast. I think it's okay. You know, I'm kind of having to keep the faith a little bit here because I'm a little bit unsure of the territory, but I'm getting there. Now that's already dry. That must have been oil, was it? No, I think it was acrylic. I should have been added longer than I expected. Okay, so I'm going to use the darker grey now straight from the tube to shorten those because they read as being too long to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's okay. So, and there's grey that's darker than I have it, I think, here really. This is the old exactitude is not truth thing as well from Matisse, you know, that it was he who said my exactitude is not truth. And um, that keeps me going when I'm at this stage, because I feel like, you know, I could become very pernickety and decide, oh, that's not exactly where that leaf is, or 
but, but if I can just get a feeling of the character of the the bones the bones of leaves against the curtain behind um then I'm all right you know that's I think the tax taxing that's the that's what I'm be, I'm being tasked yeah to do <clears throat> more than find the particular location of every single one some lovely brightness behind that leaf again there now and it's extending more out the way towards the window today so I'm just using pure white there on the other on either side of that leaf and I might darken it down a bit later on as well if it needs to be made even more significant against the white You know, I want to do a big leaf down there. It's been called for, for some reason, a big darkish leaf. So I use the Prussian blue and the sap green. I'm totally making this up now, but it feels important to have something there that's dark. Oh, there goes the splash on the curtain. Yeah, and there'll be the dark mahogany going up there. But I'm not going to put that in. So I think I'll use the oil for that. So I'm pressing the brush against the um, paper as I put this on because I want it to run a little bit as well as being dark. I want there to be some anchoring down drips. I think the, the reason I wanted to put it there at all is because I want the pull down this side maybe. I want there to be a feeling of anchoring down on that side. I might even do um, a dark brown colour over there, right on the corner. I just want it to be dark there. Yeah, like not leaf colour but just dark. Need a touch more blue as well. This one is Windsor blue just for a change. See if, that, if that'll work with the brown to make a different, a different dark. Well, I might put some of that there actually. Kind of finding the way across from the dark down here up to here. I seem to be doing the piano with the acrylic as well now. I think I'll get away with that. She commissioned me to do this painting, so I'm going to dedicate this video to her. Hi, ma'am. Hope you like it. <laughs> I'm certainly glad of the commissions. I'm really enjoying doing it. It's lovely to get back into painting flowers again, and I really feel like um, I don't want that one to be there. The bright one is a bit off putting there somehow. Um, I really feel like I want to, what I want actually, what I would love is a big bright open space where there's people milling about creative sorts, you know, poets and musicians and there might be music, live music. I actually was at a cafe in Edinburgh where I feel like this could be a potential for, uh, there's a space upstairs I think and I wondered about asking about it, but you know, you know the way sometimes you can set your sights on one thing and it's not one thing. There might be other answers for this now, but what I would love is a big, bright, open space that that isn't isolated from people really, but it's not also got anyone. I think just just so that there's, there's a bit of a bit like around at home, you know how the girls are hanging about and Lily's burping and you know, 
uh, they're playing music and dancing about the place and they're making dinner and there's th stuff going on there's something about the hive of activity and having um but i think i think especially if it was a space that was that was a dedicated creative space i would like also to have gatherings of people who love um expressing through word and music and dance and movement of all kinds and you know all of that and i feel like I w it, uh, that would be a really um I think it could be a hive of creativity. It doesn't feel like I want it to be in closed studios next to each other. Some big space where there's a runway and you can fling the paint on and play. And um, and I think flowers make me feel like that. It's a fri friv frivolous, frivolosity. <laughs> uh, some sort of frivolous kind of a thing that expansive. Um, I mean, look at that. Like, you know how there's this kind of feeling of, cheekers. Um, you know how flowers have this explosion about them and um i feel like there's quite a few of those wanting to make their way out of me at the moment i think i don't know like it could be that i start i do one and that's it and maybe i'll go off in a different direction and i do love painting people and everything as well but for the first time or for the for this is this feels like something new that i'm stating clearly is that i would love a space like that and um, and how, however it manifests itself, it's got that kind of feeling of, of uh, bountiful, creative, abundant kind of fizzing in the air, like that, that feeling. A residency somewhere, possibly. I don't know. You know the way now. But anyway, answers on a postcard, if any of you know. And also, I need to be home every day, you know, to cook the dinner. So, <clears throat> we'll see. There's room for manoeuvre, isn't there, in all these things. It's exciting, really feels exciting. So I'm putting on more of this brown now to um, set apart the leaves from the background on this side. I don't know if, this, if it's exactly what I'm wanting. It's maybe not as dark as it should be. Let's see when I put on the oil paint in the same colour later, it will have the richness and the dark that I'm after. I need to maybe check now if I've got time for a swim or not. I thought I could take the phone with me on the bike. And it's, you know, to be unlucky enough if she phoned while I was in the water. But even then I would only be in for a couple of minutes. So if it's not past half two, I could still aim for a swim. It's quarter past two. Yeah, so I could go for a swim at, if I leave here at half two, I'd be back at half three then. Because it's it's a such a glorious day and it's such an amazing place, you know, Glad uh, Glencourse Reservoir. It's really close now to here. Gladhouse is a, a, a drive. Glencourse is only it's only a short cycle away, and it's glorious. Just gonna don't know am I taming this down too much or what's the story? May not be a bad time to stop, but it really. And let it dry enough that I can decide when I come back then whether to put the oil paint in between the flowers or acrylic or something else entirely. You'd never know. Um, and I was thinking too, wasn't I, about putting that stencil. See, the stencil's got a, a stem and I thought I could cover the brightness of the stem with the stencil and then... You know what, I'm going to do that right now because the stem looks a little bit cumbersome to me. It looks too, too big and bitty somehow. But I need to, I hope it'll stay there, yeah. I need to get some more brown paint out. This is Van Dyke Brown and it's the Windsor Blue I'm using at the Van Dyke Brown, but Ultramarine Blue would do the trick just fine. Um, I just wanted to make something that would be quite dark to show off the bright of the stem. Hopefully I've not covered the stem entirely. Nearly. <laughs> but it's, I think it's the contrast I'm after all right though. I want it to be that dark either side of the stem. Mm -hmm. 
and I could do it on this one too. Some quirky angles to these stems, so I need to take them off and change direction every so often. So I don't want them to be too straight either. And then this one is straight and it's only dark on one side, this one. It's only dark on the side that's um, on the side to show off the light on the stem. Got a bit messy there. Maybe some repairing to do on that, or just slightly different shade as it extends out the way. It might go a bit more Payne's grey there. Okay. It's always quite helpful to look at the picture on the screen and see how it reads. on the smaller scale. I'm just going to put some Payne's grey out now on its own and use that to make the next dark bits. It's, it really is very dark this Payne's grey, it's almost like black so it may be too much and I may need to retrace some of these steps with a slightly lighter version but I just wanted to check out contrast and see how that feels. I like it actually. And it will probably get lighter in places but I like some of the dark especially where it's highlighting that brightness. And didn't I have some of that grey yeah, so here's Payne's Grey. There's somebody if you, um, house, the housing estates up who plays the keyboard outdoors. Sounds a bit like fairground music, I don't know if you can hear it. It's just started there now in the summertime. I think he goes out into his garden and plays music. That's a nice gesture, isn't it? People seem to like it. There's actually live music in um, Kukenzi, where my studio is every Saturday and Sunday over the summer, which is um, delightful. There were people dancing the other day on the grass down there, dancing to the live music. Right, I suppose I better go. I'm hoping to get catch a swim before school ends. Not a bad old day job, is it? As I've said before, let me say it again. I'm going to cover that one too. I don't know about the brights down here. Yeah, I mean, there's something about it, like if it feels like there's a uh, something fine lacking or I could express that in a, in a more compassionate way now um, it feels to me like there's more to be said around the flowers that there's some extracting of their beauty but I'm getting there with it I think yeah and I think sometimes there needs to almost be that kind of I don't want to say crude but you know that like um, something that's a little bit less decided for a while in order for there to be something to almost to um, to meet you know to kind of like the grit and the oyster shell to create the pearl resistance some sort of rules restrictions you know and the kind of feeling of chaos here is a little bit of that I think it's causing me to have to consider 
even just noticing, okay, so this there needs to be some finesse here now. Um, that makes me see differently and kind of focus in on areas rather than doing everything in general to find ways to make beauty happen or find, find you know, to pull out what is already beautiful here really um, in the flowers to find their particular beauty and extract it, distill it down and pour it onto the page. It's the endeavour. I'm going quite pleased with that. Extract it, distill it down and pour it onto the page. Oh, I better not get too pleased with myself. See, as soon as you feel pleased with yourself, some of the energy goes out of things. Uh, you know, if you let that be your driver, it's quite nice to feel the satisfaction of a job well done sometimes, isn't it? But also, I think it's good not to stop halfway through and say, aren't I great? Because you can start to enjoy that praise a little bit too much, sometimes I reckon. And that's a hollow one that's not. It's kind of self-congratulatory in a way that honouring yourself isn't. I don't know if that's right. Honouring the creative spirit within all of us, you know. It's a different thing from the... Well done. Well done, me. So, I suppose it's just... Uh, actually, the words might be the same, but the voice, where it comes from, is a different, a diff different kind of a source to... It. So I'll tell you now, I would, I would have um, I w put great stock in kind of cheerleading yourself on, like encouraging yourself and it's all right, that'll do, don't worry at all. There was a certain tone there that feels different from, geez, you're great altogether, aren't you? Look at what you did there, isn't that brilliant? I don't know, maybe that's all right too. It depends on the outcome. If it if it causes you to stop and admire it so much that you're afraid to lose it, that is where it becomes a bit of a stumbling block for you then. I don't know if it's the same. Is it Prometheus's myth or something about how he made some he made a woman and he f ended up she came to life and he fell in love with her or something like that. He made his perfect woman out of marble or something. And it was like he fell in love with the myth. I don't know if um, what I said there has any bearing, any resemblance to what I was talking about before that, but for some reason it came into my head. And I wonder if it has something to do with that difference between cheerleading ourselves and creating something so beautiful we're afraid to lose it and allow it to, allow it to have power over us somehow. So the creative movement leaves us and what's left is stuckness really perfectionism and all that like Delacroix said he who seeks perfection in everything achieves it in nothing I'm on fire aren't I today with the whole quote thing It's a funny thing being here in this world, isn't it? The whole lot. The whole kit and caboodle. And who knows what's going to happen next? Uncertainty is the only certainty. Or is it change? Is yeah, anyway, enough? Right. I think now it's time for swimming. And I start to go, yeah, well, it's just time for swimming time for a swim. There's enough down here and I don't know, am I going in the right direction? But I don't think I've gone so far in the direction I went in that it, it can be too wrong anyway. Like the stems need to be broken up there now. I think it's obvious that they're a little bit too linear and kind of unbroken. But I think what I do to break them up is to um, find some of the leaves through painting the background and painting on some more brightness. As I say that, I'm just going to do a couple of bright leaves and then they'll be dry when I get back and I can um, maybe then use the oil paint. This is a, 
So if I half close my eyes and just try, and, I'll just try and find a few lighter leaves. Uh, I was wondering why it was so not colourful. It's because I've used Payne's grey instead of the blue to make that green. Okay, this one is a bit better. A little bit brighter. I'll just put a touch more light on. I mean, they don't have to be that colourful. I just want to create a few more shapes that could be outlined as leaves with the darker background when I get back. Leaves and stems and just generally things interrupting the vertical sweep of the stems that are already here. So stems that go horizontally and leaves that move through the um, you know things that disturb the clear verticals of those main stems. Don't even have to be that precise with it, do I? I don't think anyway. So lovely neighbours putting the bin back for us now, isn't that kind of them? Probably a few more areas of green there too. Okay, right, I have to, I'm off for my swim. Thank you for joining me, it's been a pleasure. And yeah, do you see what I was doing there, breaking up the stems? I'm kind of happier now with the, the way that it's, um, the stems aren't so dominant. I'm trying to show you what I mean, but I'll just do that back on. the doctor about you. See the stems there? They're not so continuous. Okay, all the best. Save by the bell.